My name is David Ramsey. I'm a professional diver and underwater photographer here in Iceland. I've dived all over the world and seen things that most people wouldn't believe. However, nothing really compares to the experience or the beauty of diving in pure water. So this is the story of that water through the Mid-Atlantic Ridge from a glacier far, far away to here at the Great Lake. This is the purest dive. We're now heading towards the Langyoko Glacier. It's quite a challenging terrain. The plan is to meet a glacial guide from a new adventure company here called Into the Glacier. The main goal for going to the glacier is to understand more about where the water is coming from, to actually see where it starts its life before it begins the journey towards the Great Lake. So we can see with our own eyes what ancient glacial water actually looks like from its original development. Behind me is Langjökull, Iceland's second largest glacier and possibly one of the world's last frozen water storages. Its ancient waters are not only a source of life, but they are the secret behind one of the clearest, purest, and most beautiful dive sites you've ever seen. Being here, you get a sense of how insignificant you are in comparison with the wonder of nature. And this rock that I'm walking on right now was blasted by fire and ice when it was made some 11,000 years ago. The glacier here is melting and just by the sound 50 yards away from me here I can hear the trickling of water. It lets me know that the water is leaving this place and going somewhere else. Let's find out where it's going. Herman, why are glaciers so important to Iceland? Uh, around 100 years ago, people started to explore these glaciers. And they found out that uh, there's some kind of energy stored or hidden in the glacier. You could think of it storing a lot of water. This water then goes into our rivers and the rivers generate electricity. Since you've been working here, how have the glaciers changed? It has retreated by 300 meters. So that's where the edge of the glacier has moved. And if the temperatures will not change as they have been, if we have just constant temperature as, as we have today, then this glacier and this ice mass will actually vanish in just uh, 200 years. When you're on top of the glacier, how does it make you feel? You feel that you have to respect its authority and you have to know your limits. So, in a day like this today, you feel very great because uh, the glacier is uh, welcoming you. Here, deep in the heart of the Thingvellir Valley, we can see how Earth's most powerful forces have shaped the land and created these incredible tectonic fissures. The natural filtration process of the water from the glacier to Thingvatlavatn here at the dive site is quite spectacular. It begins its great journey as ice, and then as it melts, heads underground deep into the lava fields where it is stored for up to 100 years. The secret to the water's purity is quite simple. Lava rock combined with silent groundwater springs this makes Thingvellavatn one of the cleanest, purest, and most pristine lakes in the entire world. Perfect conditions for dry suit diving. Fraser, where are we right now? We're standing at the base of a tectonic fissure between the glacier and the lake itself. Can you describe for us the journey of the water from the glacier to the lake itself? Uh, so from the glacier, the water passes between kilometers of lava rock, travels about eight kilometers into the Earth's mantle. After about 20 or 30 years, it ends up where we are right now. 
So the water is really clean and clear. Is there any life down there? There are fish. There's dwarf arctic char, a morph of the arctic char, which use these fissures as a nursery ground. After the water's journey ends here, how pure is it? We expect the water to be incredibly pure, but the only way to be sure is we can test it. I have oh. a small kit with me today, so... Uh, okay, great, let's go. We have a small sample tube and a basic pH testing kit which we'll be able to use to determine roughly the, the pH of the water. That'll give us an indication of the acidity or alkalinity of the water itself. So once the four colors are, are in the water, they'll start to change. We'll give it a few seconds. Okay. And we're going to reference that against the chart. And we have an exact match with pH 7. So this water is, is chemically neutral. It's extremely pure and uh, unbelievably clear. In scuba diving, it's, you know, you will make mistakes, but when you do it, learn from it. Because you won't get another chance doing the same mistake again. 20 years ago, I, you know, I was going into a rack. Two of us, no line, and I went inside. And I got stuck. And I stayed there, and I was trying to find the entrance for a long time. 15 minutes or so. And at the end, I, I just, I knew that, you know, it's done. I'm not getting out. You know, at that point, my heart rate went from 60, 70 down to maybe 30. I just felt, you know, it was doom, doom. I was totally relaxed, just knowing I'm gonna die here. <laughs> I don't know why the thought turned into, no, wait a minute, it can't be. I mean, I'm not supposed to go out like this. No. This is just too stupid. <laughs> we have a there's a big club in Iceland here in Reykjavik which people basically swim in the sea all year long in speedos and the girls are much better doing it than the guys because it's it's more of a mental thing and they're stronger mentally it's easier for them to go in the cold water and just swim you know the guys will do the <laughs> it's so cold That pure water, it, it just uh, owns you, you know? There's no getting away from it. It's like floating in space. And all you can hear is the echo from the regulator and the bubbles streaming up. It really is sublime. The essence of the whole thing. Amazing. That is the purest time. Question.